G'day guys, this is Jay from Higher Electric Bikes and this is a quick video to show what's involved in fitting uh, one of the hub motor kits. Uh, the kit that you get might look slightly different to this one but they'll all be pretty much the same. Uh, it just depends on what sort of kit you actually order. So this one's a uh, 26 inch rear wheel, which most of them will be. Um, we've got the actual hub motor itself, which is the main part of the kit. Uh, the controller, the three phase brushless controller. They come all with the wiring plug and play ready to go, so it's just a matter of plugging in each plug where it fits. Uh, we've got some e-brake levers here. A lot of people choose not to use those, but uh, if you want to use that to activate regen or just to cut the power of the controller, you can use that. Uh, we've got a three-speed switch that just goes on the handlebars, uh, used to select three different speed modes uh, programmed on the controllers. Not all the controllers have that feature, but if you've got a kit that has that feature, that's what that's for. Uh, and lastly, the uh, the throttle pretty self-explanatory. Okay, so the tools you need for the job are pretty basic, just a set of Allen keys uh, and a shifter. If you've got a, a proper spanner or socket set, uh, even better, but um, you can get by with just a shifter if you've only got basic tools or uh, if you don't have any tools and just buying them specific for the job, this is all you need. Okay, the next thing you'll need, unless you haven't thought your purchase through very carefully, is a bike to bolt the kit to. Uh, this one here is a new bike, uh, so we'll start right from scratch on what to do. Uh, the things that need to be removed from the bike are the, the rear wheel uh, and the uh, existing grips off the handlebars. Apart from that, everything else on the bike stays the same. So the grips themselves, uh, depending on what sort of grips you've got on your bike, uh, are probably just jammed onto the handlebars. Uh, so they should come off just with a bit of persuasion. Uh, if they don't and you're not planning on reusing the grips, if they're thin rubber ones, uh, you can actually cut them off with a Stanley knife, a razor blade, something like that, uh, if you're not planning on reusing them. So we've removed the grips. This one's on reasonably tight. Okay, so the grips are removed. Do the same on the other side. I've actually already done the other side, I just haven't shown that, but same thing for that. Uh, and then we can put our throttle on. Okay, uh, next up we'll fit our uh, three-speed switch. This is the switch here. Uh, it slides straight onto the handlebars. There's an Allen key bolt. Uh, just there and you want to loosen that off enough that it can slide straight onto your handlebars. Now this can go on either side depending on where it's comfortable for you or where you can fit it depending on what sort of shifters you've got on the bike. Uh, you may be able to fit it on one side but not the other. You may also, uh, depending on how the bike is set up to start with, you may need to um, loosen off the bolt that holds that and slide them up or down the handlebars to get a, a neat fit for everything. So your three speed switch, I'm going to put it on this side. Uh, our throttle, same sort of deal. Uh, it's got the Allen key bolt here, which again we want to loosen off until that is open. That just slides straight onto your handlebar and tighten your Allen key bolt up to fix it into position wherever you want it. Okay, so we've now got our throttle and our three speed switch. Uh, mounted to the handlebars, tightened up. We've got the cables here just dangling down. Uh, you probably just want to put a cable tie there. Just hold it to the handlebar, uh, or you can tape it if you like. Cable ties are probably neater. Uh, and then run those back to wherever you're going to mount your controller. Okay, so next up we're now going to mount the motor to the bike. Um, normally the easy way to do this is to flip the bike upside down. Uh, and when you do that, I normally put a piece of foam or cardboard or something uh, where the seat and the handlebars go, because they'll be the parts that rest on the ground. Uh, and it saves you scratching up your uh, your new throttle and, and your seat. So I'm just going to use a bit of foam, place that roughly where the seat and handlebars will be. Flip the bike upside down. Okay, now that the bike's upside down, the next thing we need to do is remove the rear wheel. A lot of bikes these days use quick release rear wheels, which this one does, so it's very easy to get them off. Uh, if your bike has a, a bolt on rear wheel, it's just a matter of loosening off the bolts that hold that on and pulling it off. So for the quick release one, you just loosen off the quick release. And you just simply pull that off, take it away. Okay, so here's our motor. Uh, this particular one has a disc brake mount on one side and a, uh, a threaded section there for adding the freewheel on the other. All of the motors will have uh, this threaded side cover here for putting your free wheel on. Okay, so here's our free wheel. Uh, this is a new one. You may uh, 
be able to reuse the existing one off your bike if it's uh, if it's got the thread on tight. Uh, if you've got a cassette type, which most uh, modern bikes use, uh, it may not be compatible. You'll have to get a thread on one. So that just slips over the axle there. Got uh, the washers on the axle. They'll have to be removed first. Get the clearance. It just slips over. Make sure you get it on straight and square. And then that just threads on. You don't have to worry about tightening it up too much because as soon as you put the chain on the bike and start pedaling, that will tension that on there as tight as it needs to go. Okay, so that's our freewheel fitted. That's ready to go on now. I'm not going to bother fitting a disc brake uh, on this particular one just for the purpose of this video. Um, but if you do do that, then obviously you just bolt on your disc brake there. Depending on what sort of uh, brake calipers you've got, you may need to add um, a washer or two underneath the disc to space that out a bit. If you've got wide calipers uh, and they're too wide, they'll actually hit the motor case, so you won't be able to use those. So um, Most of your, your cheaper mechanical cable operator disc brakes are okay, uh, but a lot of hydraulic disc brakes, unfortunately, the calipers are a little bit too wide, and you need to put a spacer under there to, uh, to get that spacing exactly right. Um, that's a bit of trial of error, unfortunately. It's different for everyone's bike and every, every different type of brake caliper, so uh, you just have to do that on a case-by-case -case basis. But for now, this is ready to go on the bike. So we uh, just lift our chain up a little bit, so that comes over the top of the axle, drop the motor down into the dropouts, making sure you don't pinch with any of your wires, get your spaces in the right spot where they need to be. Okay. And that's in now. You just want to make sure that the, uh, the motor is sitting fairly, fairly central in the dropouts. Wiggle it around a bit, make sure that the wheel spins freely. It's in the centre. If it's not, you might want to just adjust the positioning of your spaces. If you've got a powerful motor, um, you should be using torque arms. So those torque arms will go underneath the main axle nut and then bolt up uh, to the frame there, depending on what sort you're using. So. Our motor's on now, it's just a matter of tightening those nuts up as tight as you can. And then we'll flip it back over. You want to do those up nice and tight. I'm using a ring spanner here. If you happen to know what size the nut is, you can use that. Otherwise just a shifter is fine. If you've only got basic tools, a shifter is, is fine if you, you don't happen to have a full spanner set. Okay, so we've got our bike back up the right way now. We've got our grips, throttle three-speed switch fitted. Our, uh, our motor's fitted down here at the back, bolted on nice and tight. And we've just got the wires for that still loose. So the next thing to do now is to fit the controller and the battery, and then we're done. You can put this pretty much wherever you like. The easiest is to mount the controller and the battery on a rack on the back, uh, but you can put that wherever you like. So a lot of people choose to put them in the triangle somewhere there. Uh, you can mount it to your top bar, the back of your seat post, uh, underneath on the down tube here, basically uh, wherever suits you. But as I said, for quick and easy installation, uh, throwing it on a rear rack is the easiest. Okay, so this is your last step, mounting your controller and your battery. This is just a, a low capacity uh, 48 volt battery I'm using here for a demo. Uh, depending on what sort of kit you've got, your battery uh, it'll probably be a bit bigger than that. Uh, but you can have them in different configurations for whatever suits. So we've got our uh, red and black, our uh, main power wires, so that goes to the battery. Uh, the three coloured fatter wires, the blue, green and yellow, are your phase wires. Um, so that just plugs in plug for plug. Pretty much each plug on the kit can only plug in to one other spot and it only fits one place, so makes it almost impossible to uh, plug the wrong things in the wrong spot. Uh, the little Five pin plug, it's called the hall plug. Again, that just plugs into the only plug where it fits. Okay, other wires that we've pulled through from up the front here are our throttle uh, and our three speed switch wiring. Our throttle and the three speed switch both use uh, similar three pin plugs, so they'll usually be marked uh, which one is which. Uh, so they'll plug in again to their corresponding plugs.
Okay, so that's pretty much it now. All the, uh, the wiring is plugged in, everything's connected, so if I twist that throttle, the bike will take off. So uh, the hardest part now, well, not really that hard, it's just time consuming, I guess, is just tidying up all your wiring. Uh, and that's up to you how you want to do that. Uh, as I said before, the neatest thing to do is to cable tie it. So you pull wires from your handlebars together, cable tie probably one there, one around down there, pull it back to the, the back of the bike where your controller is, uh, and cable tie, very importantly, that you cable tie your, uh, your motor lead to the, the chain stay of your frame. You don't want that to be flopping around and end up in the spokes and very quickly get caught and, and break off. How you mount your batteries and your controller is, is up to you. Um, I guess the most ghetto way of doing it is you can just duct tape it on if you like. Uh, ideally, your controller you try and bolt on. If it's a plastic rack like one of these, you can just use self tappers to screw that in. Um, some people use hockey straps. Um, basically, again, DIY, whatever uh, whatever you want to do, whatever works for you, uh, whatever you're, however you're setting up your bike. Uh, if you wanted to, as I said before, you can put your controller inside your triangle. Uh, some people choose to make up covers that neat uh, sort of either plastic or metal uh, side covers uh, or fabric even, uh, stretchy fabric with a zipper or velcro along the top, that'll completely cover up everything. Uh, so that side is uh, again very much up to whatever you want to do. But as far as the actual kit installation goes, um, that's it step by step. As I said the rest of it's just tidying up your wiring. Speaking of ghetto, I've just uh, strapped the battery and control down just with an inner tube just so I can do a quick test. Uh, just to make sure it works. It's a good idea to uh, test your, your kit once it's all bolted together before you do tidy all your wiring and everything up just in case there is a plug you haven't plugged in properly or a loose wire or something like that to, uh, to check that before you, you tidy it all up because it makes troubleshooting a bit easier if that's the case. Okay, so everything's all connected now and turned on so that, uh, that's right, right to go. So if we lift up the back wheel now and our throttle Works, that's in low speed mode. Middle speed. And on top speed. Okay, so all working. And assuming that everything is strapped down tight, your wiring's not gonna fall into your wheels, it's ready for a test ride. Okay, so that's it, that's pretty much everything that's involved. As I said, pretty straightforward, doesn't really take too long. If, you're, uh, if you haven't done one before, it'll probably take about an hour. Otherwise, if you're experienced or fairly mechanically handy, it'll probably only take you about half an hour or so. Okay, so that's it. Hopefully that's uh, helped you out and showing you what's involved.